Hey everybody, this is Dave from Mark Spectre Comics and I'm back. This time I'm going to show you my top pickups from 2022 and why this was my best year yet. Stay tuned for that intro. Welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so when I do put out some content you get in a timely fashion. Like I said, I'm going to show you my top pickups from 2022. Kind of just like a wrap up on the year. Um, you know, some of my, well, I guess kind of like what my goals were, what I picked up, and what I see going forward. Um, I thought 2022 was my best year yet. Um, I've been collecting probably, this is probably my eighth or ninth year now in, um, in comics. Um, I didn't grow up, you know, wasn't exposed to comic books. I only got exposed to comic books later on in life, um, you know, after college. So, uh, but yeah, there was, 2022 was an interesting year to say the least. Um, a lot happened, you know, in our country globally, um, and definitely impacted the comic market. Um, there was a lot of, you know, really high prices early in the year. And then up until probably around late spring, and then prices just quickly tanked. <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you some of my, you know, pickups for the year, my thoughts um, behind some of these pickups and uh, where I see them going forward. So for 2022, I didn't really have too many goals for uh, collecting. Um, one of my collecting goals was to finish my Moon Knight Volume 1. I still haven't finished it. I'm one book away, and I'll explain that in my 2023 um, comic collecting goals, which will be coming up in a later video. But um, I didn't really have any like you know big books to look for. I knew I wanted to pivot more towards the silver and golden age, um, and wanted to stay a little bit more away from like the really like new spec modern stuff. Because I had a feeling that the market was going to, you know, turn, turn for the worse. You know, there was going to be a big, I think we were like plateauing at the, uh, the top of the bubble. And uh, it showed, it definitely showed that going into the uh, late spring, uh, into, the, into the summer. So I'm going to show you what I picked up in, in no particular order. Uh, and I'll, I'll just like explain what I got. So um, going with the whole... Um, I basically pivoted more towards silver and golden age, and I wanted to kind of get more into, you know, a little bit rare books. Um, I always had an interest in sci-fi, fantasy, and horror, so I tried to pick some more of those up later in the year um, when prices started to get down a little bit more, but they were still somewhat affordable. And then, you know, I just picked up some good key books too in between, you know, some copper, uh, copper age books, silver age books, and so forth. So. I'm going to start just showing you off some books and uh, I'll, you know, I'll explain, you know, what my thought process was on if there was anything behind them. So first book, Wolverine number one. This is from the uh, limited series. Um, yeah, I, you know, great cover, classic cover by Frank Miller. This is uh, CGC 9.6. Um, and uh, it's a, you know, newsstand. So yeah. I'm not going to really like talk too much about it because there's a bunch of books. You know, this isn't going to be a top 10, top 5, any of that. It's just going to be my top pickups for the year. So there's going to be over 10 books. <laughs> so that's that's the first book. Like I said, no particular order, no particular, you know, value from top to bottom, you know. Uh, it's just really cool books that I thought, you know, I couldn't really pass up on. Um, next book. This was my first Avon book. So Avon is a publisher from the Golden Age. This comes from um, 1951. This is Murderous Gangsters, issue number one. Um, great Wally Wood and Shu Hang artwork. Just love that, you know, really cool crime cover. There's some really nice crime covers back in the 50s. Um, this one has that mixture of good girl art and crime you can't go wrong you always see these you know damsel in distress is wearing these beautiful red dresses and uh, this is a great example so I got this out of 2.5 I think I paid I want to say it was 150 or 175 
So I was like, yeah, that was a, that was a no-brainer. So sometimes you just gotta you just gotta pounce on these books. You know, if you if it seems like a really good price, pick them up, especially something that old. You know, 1951. You know, even at that low grade, it's still complete. Next book, this is definitely a spec book, and um, looking to see this book definitely go up in value in 2023 and then forward. This is Booster Gold, issue number one, out of CGC 9.8. Uh, it is a newsstand copy, which honestly, what, this, this came out when? 90, 1986. It doesn't really matter. I know some people like to collect the um, newsstands over the uh, directs, especially in the high grades. So uh, I picked this up at a good price as well. I think this was like 250 if I'm not mistaken. Um, first appearance of Booster Gold, Skeets, and Blackguard. So there's a little bit of speculation that Booster Gold may show up in, um, I think, the Blue Beetle movie. I don't know. I haven't had any, any confirmation behind that. But um, it is a great DC key to get, and it's still widely undervalued, in my opinion. So take that for what it's worth. Um, next book, going back to the Golden Age. This book I ended up getting on an Instagram um, uh, live sale. You know, there's a lot of them, a lot of great um, sellers on Instagram. And uh, he ended up putting up uh, really, really cool Golden Age books on the wall. And uh, he had this one for a very good price. And I was like, I got to get this. And it's signed. So this is... Uh, Wiss Comics, issue number 77 from Fawcett. This is from August of 1946. I gotta show this a little bit closer because the colors on here are fantastic. And if you see it right next to Captain Marvel, it is signed by Ken Bald. Um, really difficult to get Golden Age books signed. I know signed books are not for everyone. I completely understand that. Um, some people love it. Um, I just like it because, you know, it, obviously I never got the chance to meet Ken Bald, but uh, it is really difficult to get a Golden Age book signed. And Ken Bald did sign pretty late into, I want to say it was the 2000s or early 20 teens he signed. I forget. Uh, but this was signed in 2018 okay so there you go 2018 <laughs> um uh, before he passed away so uh it is centerfold detached and it was graded at a 6.5 um i'm not really sure what the minimum i guess what the highest grade you can get for a centerfold detached i thought it was like a 5.0 but um i'm not sure um it is also a really cool cc back cover so cc back did a lot of great artwork for uh faucet back in the day so, really cool. That is a PC book. That's not going anywhere. Some of these books will be going up for sale at a later time. Um, speaking of another book that will not be going for sale, this is a PC book. This is, is this tomorrow? And this is no number. Um, from Cacetical Guide in 1947. This is a great flag cover. And it's also, um, what do you call it, an anti-communism um, book. So if you remember me showing this book earlier in the year when I did my unboxing, um, it does show you the Ten Commandments of Citizenship. Fight communism with these Ten Commandments. Really cool. Um, obviously, covers a little graphic as well. <laughs> this book came out and I believe... Four different versions of this cover. So there's three different versions. There's um, the standard version right here. There's a Canadian version. And there's also an Australian version. And then there's four different versions of this cover. Um, this one has the 10 cent on there. There's one that's also just red with no uh, cent on it. No 10 cent. And uh, I forget what the other two versions are. Oh, it says it on there. No price and no price with blank circle. There you go. Um, really cool book. I was really happy to pick this up. And um, 
Yeah. That's really all I got to say about that book. Next book, we're going to do uh, Pre-Code Horror. So, like I said, I was pivoting more towards the uh, Golden Age in 2022. And uh, this one's, this is a great cover. Um, not really, oh, what did I say? I said Pre-Code Horror. This is not uh, Pre-Code Horror. This is more of a war cover. Uh, silly me. So, this is um, Date with Danger, issue number six. And uh, they often did this in the golden age where um, they would, you know, sometimes have only a couple of issues or like one, you know, one issue or three issues and um, they wouldn't start at number one. So um, this is an example of one, Date with Danger. The series started at issue number five. This is issue number six, which is the last issue. Um, this is a Cold War cover, as you can see here, with the soldier there getting shot. Um, you also get another damsel in distress, this time in a green dress, not a red dress, which is uh, quite rare to see one not in a red dress or a yellow dress. But a uh, great cover. I like these war covers. And this is from 1953 from Standard Comics, and it's also a white pager. So, really cool. All right. Next book is going to be my, I think, my rarest book. And also the most expensive book I bought of the year. And uh, it's also in a magazine case, which I'm kind of surprised that they did that. But it is what it is. So, this is Wonder Woman, issue number seven. This is from... The winter of 1943. Really early Wonder Woman cover. Um, you know, it is, what do they call this? A Wonder Woman for President cover, which is really cool. If you take a look at this cover, it is beautiful. Wonder Woman, thousand years in the future. Um, I, had a, I couldn't pass this up when this came up for auction. I got this at the uh, local auction house in, in state. And... Um, what can I say? H.B. Peter cover and artwork. Um, and it also has a four-page feature on Joan of Arc. So, uh, yeah, not really digging this whole uh, magazine cover because it makes that little weird noise when you when you squeeze it a little bit. But um, definitely my most expensive pickup and my probably my rarest pickup of the year. So, uh, you know, single-digit Wonder Woman book. Uh, it's just a beautiful cover. But yeah, there you go. Um, and then the last two slabs I got, I just um, shot this in my previous video. I ended up getting two copies this year of Tales of the Teen Titans, issue number 44 at a CGC 9.6. Uh, first, you know, Dick Grayson as Nightwing and first Jericho. <laughs> um, I just picked these up at great prices. They were both under 150 you know, with, you know, fees, taxes, all that crap. Um, this book is super, super undervalued, in my opinion. You know, 9.8's around three and change, three, four hundred bucks and change for a character as important as Nightwing. You know, that's just crazy to me. 9.6's you can buy right now, the 1 to 150 range. I ended up picking up this uh, recent copy here that I bought in December. For 125 crazy cheap and it's a great spec book um you know so yeah highly highly recommend that book if you if you don't have it um we'll be hunting for a 9.8 but i'm happy with the two 9.6s that i got and then uh, i'm gonna finish off with some raw books because uh it's not just all about the slabs you know <laughs> gotta show some raws all right so we're gonna get some uh, pre-code horror finally First pickup, Witchcraft, issue number six. Really, really cool skull cover. Um, pretty, I want to say it's not super rare, but it's definitely a rare book. Um, I, I do like how it has this, you know, really cool, you know, anamorphic cover, you know, shape shifting into the uh, skull at the end. You got a little tombstone on there as well. A lot of people who collect pre-cohort horror love the Witchcraft series. 
So really cool classic covers in that run. I'm going to try to move these along because I do have a decent amount of RAWs. All right, getting into some sci-fi. You know, I do love weird fantasy and weird science. Um, I will be trying to pick up some more in 2023. This is Weird Fantasy issue number 22. I ended up picking this up at Rhode Island Comic Con. Um, there you go. Probably one of my favorite um, Weird Fantasy covers here. And then this is Weird Fantasy issue number 13. You got this really cool orange planet. You got the um, rocket there on the side. A lot of these covers from Weird Fantasy have rockets on them. And I'm trying to collect um, a lot of these that have rockets on the Weird uh, Fantasy and Weird Science run. So you can see this one has a rocket on there as well. But a really cool uh, skeleton. That's pretty cool. That's what caught my eye on that one. But yeah, one of my favorites is that Weird Fantasy. It's a low grade, but it's complete. You know, that's what matters. Um, another one that is absolutely stunning is this winter cover with Weird Fantasy. This is Weird Fantasy issue number 12. Beautiful, beautiful backdrop there. You've got the trees covered in snow. you got two planets there in the backdrop. It looks like another meteor flying through the, the planet or nearby. And then you got that rocket right in the middle. Really, really cool cover. So, like I said, I will be trying to get some more weird fantasy. And I think I got a, a, a weird fantasy that's coming in. So, that'll be coming in in a later video. Like I said, tons and tons of, you know, books coming in. I just got to find the time to make the content. You know what I'm saying? All right. Another beautiful cover that I picked up in 2022. Weird Science Fantasy. Issue number 24. Got this for under 100 bucks. This was, I thought, a really good price. Um, low grade, this is from 1954, but you can see also there the rocket featuring in the middle of the cover, really cool archway there in the architect, in the, uh, backdrop. And then you got the uh, star all the way in the corner. Really cool. And you get these atomic, um, panels, atomic rocket panels here on the side. With you. This is classic of weird science fantasy. All right. What do we got next? Uh, let's see. This was a nice cheap, um. Uh, Golden Age War cover. I picked this up for I think 20 bucks. Um, it is I think this is Cold War. This looks like Cold War. This is GI Combat issue number 18. It's a nice little war cover there. You get see one of the soldiers has a little hand grenade. You got another soldier there charging him with a rifle. Just you know a really affordable Golden Age War cover for under 25 bucks. So like I said, you can find deals. In golden age if you look hard enough the last two books I just showed were under 100 bucks just shows you this was another book I got for under 100 bucks this is pre-code horror this is beyond issue number 12 right yep issue number 12 I got this for under 100 bucks really cool cover you see this guy here he's digging a uh, what looks like a nice little tomb for this uh, damsel in distress here in the bottom. <laughs> really nice. All right. What else we got? Oh, this is a cool one. Um, this is Headline Comics. This is also a very under-the-radar title in the Golden Age. Headline Comics, issue number 18. For the American Boy, it says on there. Really cool uh, menacing villain there at the top. Trying to strike out some uh, gamma rays. There you go. Not his first appearance. I think his first appearance came in the issue prior. All right. This was another book I got for a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks for pre-code horror, and it's a highly desirable title. Tales from the Crypt. This is Tales from the Crypt issue number thirty-one. Look at that. Um, you know me, I like collecting last issues and runs. This is Master Comics, issue number 133. Has that almost like a pre-code horror vibe to it a little bit without being like really like in-depth pre-code horror. Got that graveyard scene there with 
with uh, Captain Marvel Jr., which I do like collecting Captain Marvel Jr. I'm not going to be showing a lot of Captain Marvel Jr. today. This will be the only book. I ended up picking up a decent amount of Captain Marvel Jr. earlier in the year. But um, this is the last issue from Master Comics 133. And it's also first appearance of, I believe, Bill Battle. Uh, minor, minor appearance, uh, minor key, as you can, you know, say there. And then um, I think we're gonna finish off with two more pre-code horror books, and then that's it. This is, you know, getting over like 20 minutes now. It's getting a long video. And I said I wanted to make this a little short. Um, I ended up picking this up from my buddy Jade at his comic shop in Oklahoma. This is Adventures into the Unknown from American Comic Groups. Uh, issue number 22. There you go. Really nice cover. This was also, I think, 90 bucks, I think, for this book. Um, see this in another one. Damsel in Distress. You got a sigh there in the background and then a creepy hand coming at her. Really cool. Like I said, Pre-Code Horror it definitely has this great eye appeal. And that's why I've, I kind of pivoted in 2022 into the Golden Age. Especially into pre-code horror and sci-fi. And then the last book. Um, let's see. Strange Fantasy issue number... What issue number is this? Um, I think this is 8 or 6. I'm not really sure. One of the books that they don't actually put the uh, number on the title. Um, so yeah. Strange Fantasy. Single digit uh, Strange Fantasy. Just don't know what, what uh, issue it is off offhand I'll, I'll put it in the uh, description or um, on here while I'm talking about it this is from Ajax um, really creepy looking dude here has this weapon that he's gonna looks like he's trying to cut her throat with it's in bondage and it's a uh, damsel in distress wearing a red dress can't go wrong you don't often see a lot of pink covers in the golden age um, especially in pre-code horror so this is this one caught my eye when I saw it and this was really affordable. I, f I forget how much I paid, but it was, I, I think it was under 150. But uh, yeah, that's it. Like I said, 2022 was a great year for me. Um, you know, I picked up a ton of books. Some of them were at pretty good prices. Uh, I know we were in a down market towards the uh, middle to latter part of the year. And you're going to expect to see that going forward into 2023. But it doesn't mean you can't pick up books at good prices. Um, so as I showed you there, you know, in all these books, I I just, you know, showed whether they were slabbed or raw. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully you saw something you've, you know, you haven't seen before or you learned a little something. Um, if you did, hit the thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you like the content. And uh, until next time, Mark's with the comics. Out.